So I was um, looking around my garden the other day and I noticed under my bench I had quite a few offcuts um, laying around left over from my video where I made a wood store, if any of you remember that uh, video. Um, and it got me wondering what I could use them for. Um, so I thought birdhouse. So this is the stock we're going to be using. Um, we've got a variation of bits and pieces. It, to be honest, it's pretty much already all there. It just needs a little bit of shaping or um, cutting, I should say, down to size. Um, smoothing off the edges so not so rough. Uh, gluing and nailing, that's pretty much all it's going to be. So it's going to be a very traditional, simple birdhouse. Nice, quick project and um, made out of leftovers. But one of the first things I'm going to do is trim these ends off. I then trim down all the edges so they're square and identical. Uh, what I've basically done is I've measured out the thickness of one of these boards, which is 20, uh, 21 millimeters, and I've marked a line at the bottom here. Um, obviously, because that's going to be the thickness of the bottom of the bottom piece of wood that's going to be inserted inside there. Uh, and then I've measured up. Uh, this can be any measurement that you want. I, I've measured up. Um, actually, I can't remember how much I've measured up. Perhaps if I know, so I can tell you, doesn't it? I've actually measured up another 200 millimeters <coughs> from that line up to here. Uh, drawn another line, and then what I've done there is worked out the centre point of this width of wood, uh, which is 148 millimeters, um, the, the width, and then I've marked, worked out the centre peak point, and I've marked a line up. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my uh, bevel gauge here, and I'm going to work out bevel if I can get it right way around probably best to work from the top here so what I'll do is line up with two lines tighten it off just make sure that lines up with the other side which it does so we know it's accurate and we can keep that uh, as it is, um, and then we can use it for the second piece underneath here. And if you, if you haven't guessed already, this is the front and back, and that's the pitch of the roof. <laughs> I probably should have explained that really, shouldn't I? Explanation is everything. So you just want to mark that off there. Do the same on the other side. Oh, actually, I'm slightly out there. Okay. Okay, so it's probably an easy way to do this, but all I'm going to do is I'm going to put it the side piece against the front and back piece here, like so. Just rest it against it. And I'm just going to mark down. Like so. And I can Okay, and there's our four sides. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to cut this piece in two. Uh, the reason being is I'm going to put two blocks in the side here attached to these side bits and I'm going to be able to screw this front section on. That would uh, be for cleaning and also for when I want to attach this to the wall, I want to be able to get inside to actually put the screws in through the back. So that's what this section is going to be for and it's also going to have the hole for the actual uh, birds to go in. Uh, so that's the next step is to measure out exactly how far down I want to go and then cut it out. In this case I'm going to come down 100 millimeters from the bottom of the pitch. And that should give me a nice set of room for the hole there and maybe for a little platform to go in, in, into there. 
Okay, the next thing I want to do is put a couple of these blocks in, like I said, to screw the front on. So just to keep it all in line, because we all know how difficult it is to do stuff while it's all moving around, marking up and stuff, and you end up with the wrong markings. So I'm just going to clamp it in place, and this should help keep it all exact. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just going to put one of these in, like so. I might just uh, pop this front in as well and make sure it's definitely lined up correctly. going up there and I need to cut it off on the side section there and now with these I'm just going to quickly cut them off with a tennis saw because these don't have to be perfect they're not going to be in view they're just going to be inside to screw to it helps if I've got, got too much on my workbench like always I need to start storing this stuff elsewhere I keep saying I'm going to build a tool cabinet with all these tools I've got everywhere but when it'll happen, I have no idea. Right, okay, let's get cut. Now, I need to make sure our screws, uh, our nails rather, sorry, aren't going to go too deep through that, so they shouldn't. Okay. So, what do we have? We have the left one, which is this one here. There, so just one. Some glue on that. A tissue. And that just puts up against that line there, like so. Should be long enough for that nail, not too long, but long enough. Now, because I'm going to be screwing rather central, I'm going to keep the nails to the bottom and the top. Okay, so I think it's time to start gluing up the main body. Okay, now we've got the glue on. I've decided the best, probably the best way to do this is treat it as if it's a, a, a picture frame. This is where an electric nailer works best. However, I haven't got any nails in mine long enough. Now we've got most of the nails in, we can remove the clamp. Now I'm going to drill the hole. And basically, what I'm going to use is my uh, one of my forcing bits, and the largest one I have is a 35 mil. Now I think that's plenty big enough for small birds. Uh, if not, you can always obviously take it down and bore it out a little bit more. Um, so what we need to do now is find the centre line again. Which I'm just going to do it from. It's going to be more of a rough way of doing it. Come down on the centre line. Now, I'm probably going to put it in the centre. It's just that, just that for you. I'm just probably going to do it in the centre of this piece here. Now, 
Yeah, I'm going to do it quite high up. Maybe about there, maybe. Yes, yeah, about right. So it's going to be about there. It's going to be sort of roughly centre with this actual top piece. I must apologise now, but this is a bit of a fumbly video I've noticed, and a bit of a or a lot of waffling I seem to be doing. We should get these things ready before I uh, before I start filming, shouldn't I? Although it does show you the uh, kind of nature of what people have to go through, I suppose. Now I'm just going to be using mostly power tools for this project. I know I try to do a lot of my projects projects rather with hand tools only, but I think in this case I want to get this project done. There's no need to necessarily do this with uh, all hand tools. Now you want to make sure you're straight. Probably should have come in from both sides really, make it a lot neater, but what I'm also going to do now, while that's off, is just put a couple of holes in for the screws to go into to attach it to the wall. You don't necessarily have to be anywhere specific, you can just be anywhere really. But I'm going to put two in, because I think that would be adequate. bit wonky <laughs> but that should do actually I'll put a third one in just just in case I do want to put three in yeah. done okay so I've already marked off and cut out the bottom now we just need to glue it in and nail it up I've decided to do mine as a slot in because I just think it'd be a bit, a bit nice, a bit stronger, and look a bit more, look a bit more. Uh, I'm trying to think a word for it, really, a bit more elegant, rather, shall I say? in actually I've one on either side is probably enough okay now that I've got the first section of the roof cut what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop it 15 mil from the uh, from the apex point point of the apex rather. Obviously we've got our overhang of four uh, and what, we have to, what, what I want to do is actually have it an overhang on the side here as well but remember we can't actually attach it to this front piece here because that's got to slide in and out so what we're going to have to do is attach it to this bottom piece here and that's a glue and a nail once again now I should be able to use the thinner ones for this. Okay. Now we just need to get one one tack in really for now. Now, 
before I go any further with the roof, I just want to drill these holes first, these pilot holes for my screws to screw the front down. I'm only going to go for one screw in each side. You've got to get this right. I'm going to pilot hold them and then put a screw in afterwards to save splitting. I'm hoping these screws, screws won't split the wood because they're quite wide so I'm going to just put them in gently with a, by hand. Okay so the final part now is to attach the belt for the roof. Try not to get into the same nails. <laughs> okay, so what I'm also going to do is, in addition to having the rod coming out, as a perch for the burst to sit on, I'm also going to put a little ledge for them to sit on as well. A nice seal on it. Okay, so what I'm using here is some pretty nasty GAC roofing sealer, GACI roofing sealer, which is a nightmare to get out of the tube. It's nasty because you get in your hands. And there you have it. And easy to make birdhouse. Quite large, very sturdy, quite heavy to be fair, but Quite a lot of gloop on the back there where I folded the felt grab, that's not a problem. Uh, yeah, I think the birds are quite like that. So there you have it, a traditional basic birdhouse made from leftovers. See you next time.